So last game we were playing Philly, Joel and B got me in the post. Obviously, <laughs> just went over me. Scoring. <laughs> he slapped me on the butt going down. He said, go KU. Dad used to tell me all the time. He used to tell me all the time. Son, don't worry about the mules. Just load the wagon. Hey. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Rock Chuck Unplugged with Chris Tehan. Uh, today, I'm going to welcome my new co-host, Mitch Lightfoot. We got a good guest on today. I'm excited for the show. Ochai, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> doing great. First off, Och, tell us where you at right now, and what what do you got going on? Um, so I'm in uh, Minneapolis right now. Uh, we play the Timberwolves at three. It's kind of an early game, but um, we play them today at three. It's Martin Luther King Day. Um, so all the games are kind of earlier or all spread out today. So, so yeah, I'm here. What's your, uh, NBA schedule? Like how crazy is the travel? Do you guys like how, how crazy is that? Can you speak to that? Uh, I would say it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Cause we're like in and out of cities really quick, but I would really equate it back to like Kansas. Like the travel at Kansas was really the closest it is to the NBA travel without just like, you know, how we would go into a city one night and then leave after it'd just be like that but then we go to a different city so it's like uh -huh. so do you guys leave after every game yeah yeah we'll leave after every game unless like we had one situation where we were uh we played golden state and then we played sacramento in two days so we just bust to sacramento which is like i want to say it was like a little close to like two hours yeah but it wasn't that bad nothing 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 too crazy so very cool very cool no I, that's the one thing I miss the most about Kansas. Like, I mean, I haven't got there, like, a nice private flight experience in so long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm probably never getting it again. Yeah, over over the summer, like, during pre-draft and all that, we were doing, uh, or, I mean, like, they have, like, the draftees, all those guys um, go through commercial flights. Like, the teams will fly you around to yeah. flights. So you're in and out of airports, like, going through security and stuff, and it's like, you go from Kansas and then, you know, it's not, it's just how it is. That's how the, like, the process is. You just go and it's like, you're going through security and all that and you just kind of forget about it. And I know you hey, got, like. <laughs> Y'all got to count your blessings because we were in Germany. <laughs> they, we were driving like 11 hours in a bus That's to great. play games. And we'd do the same thing we did at Kansas. We'd play the game and get right back on the bus and drive 11 hours back. So you would get back at like 7. That's eight, crazy. Eight, no, that's crazy. You must really love basketball because I don't think I love basketball enough for that bad boy right there. That's it, it, that's it, wild. It definitely tested my will a little bit. It made me uh, it made me appreciate everything he had. It. <laughs> <laughs> the grass isn't always greener. Let me tell you. Yeah, we got paid a little bit. That's that's that's. We made a bad day. Did not a little bit last year. I was going to ask you if there is a specific moment that you could go back and have the chance of playing again at Kansas, what would that moment be? A specific moment? Whether it be a good moment, a bad moment, a moment you want to change, a moment you want to relive, what would that moment be? Oh, there's a classic. I think there's a lot, there's a lot of moments that I want to relive. Um, I, I said number one, I don't, it's between, it's between my freshman year at West Virginia losing that game. Cause like we were kind of, we could have maybe won the big 12, we were definitely in the hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. But, like, it was close. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah. That one or uh, I would say losing. For, uh, well, I don't know. I think this is a good moment just for, like, like you guys were there, too, obviously. It was my uh, sophomore year when we lost at home to Baylor. I think that's when we kind of just, like, saw that oh, there, yeah. there was other teams that – there were just other teams that were, like, that were nice like that. So, yeah. That's what really kind of got us motivated for those next couple of years to like get on Baylor's level a little bit, you know, like all the guards that they had, the guard success. And then they kind of just flipped the role when they came in and beat us, you know, on Allen Fieldhouse. And then it was just like, all right, we got to do something about it. Um, they're in our conference. They're going to be there for the next two, three years. So we got to we got to step up to their level. Yeah, that's like I said, after the same thing. Yeah, that's a, that was your, what's your moment, Chris? Oh, what's my moment? I mean, I don't know, like playing wise or like just watching because I would go back and watch so many games. Like the second half of that Kansas State game, like being able last year, being able to watch that from the view I did. I mean, outside went absolutely <laughs> nuts. And it was so nice just being able to like get up and talk all of our snack after the game. Rocket talk. Anything. 
anything after that. That was that was a lot of fun. I, I still was think so it's fun. funny. It's hilarious to me. Yeah. Movie, what about you? Movie. My moment. Oh, I mean, besides outside of like our our crazy run this year or this past year, mm. um, I'd have to say the the West Virginia game that you were talking about. That game it it, uh, it kind of changed the course of that year. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that one game you win or lose the league on one game, but it, it, it damn near felt like at that time. And uh, yeah. it was definitely some controllable things that that uh, as a team we we messed up on that that could have that could have been fixed and would have been relatively easy to fix. I was trying to comment on what they are, but <laughs> yeah, I was about to say <laughs> I the best. that bad boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, but those I mean, those are games like in the grand scheme of things being out of it, like games like that was games like us getting our ass kicked against USC in uh twenty was that yeah, twenty twenty. Yeah. Like those are games that you look back on and it's like they really changed like your freshman year, the way we played and lost against West Virginia and lost the Big Twelve made us a better team your sophomore year. Like that's yeah. why we're so hard to realize that. Like when you're in it, it's so hard to realize that it's like, it's impossible to realize uh, you're losing. I mean, you're losing at the top, so it's like you just dude. A municipal everyone's like point or it's like going against you, kind of in that in that way. So when we lost the USC, that had to be the lowest of lows of my basketball career. Like there was God. there was no light at the end of the tunnel. It was a very dark time in kids uh, basketball. Yeah. And we well, come from that, so where we are now is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, that was my whole thought in it. Like, we got our ass kicked. Obviously, I knew I was coming back, and you guys, like, oh, Chai, Dave, made some <laughs> big decisions to make. <laughs> I was really sad for Marcus Garrett because I wanted Marcus to come back because I knew that we were going to be one of the best teams in the country next year if we got everybody back. Yeah. Those are things I think about. You, you guys, you guys remember it. I mean, obviously, that, that whole summer, it was just like, I was still on the fence of if I wanted to stay in, if I wanted to go, you know, I, like, I could have easily just stayed in and then, you know, went that whole path and then kind of not left Kansas, you know, behind, but just like didn't leave or leave off where I really wanted to. So I was just like, that was kind of just irking me. And I was like, man, I got to go back and really just leave a legacy for this remainder of my last year that I have here. So it's like, that's kind of where, it all came from everything kind of just came together all the pieces came together guys were coming back you added remy all that stuff and then we just had this feel i think this feel that was just like so we, we just had this sense of urgency throughout the whole entire year um that i think you, you really can't even describe it but like every single day of practice it was just like we had urgency to get better to to beat the next team by 30 or you know not be down by 15 and a half, whatever, whatever it was, we were just motivated to to get over that hump and whatever it was. Well, we had love. I feel like that last year's team, I'm sure Mitch can touch it. We had love for Kansas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We didn't want to, like, we felt like we had had such a hard tenure before then. Like we had felt like an embarrassment to KU. Like we were on two of the worst teams that we've had in the coach self era. So I feel like that lit a fire under everybody's ass kind of. And then, oh, it's like you came back and there's a lot of people that come back and they're kind of questioning, being like, should I have stayed? Should I have, like, should I be here? Yeah. And I think that you went 100% being like, if I'm going back, like I'm locked in. I think Jay Will's done that a lot this year too. But that focus is, that's what, like, kind of, you kind of got everybody on board as well to do that. Yeah, in a way, just kind of like um, leading by my actions. Um, you guys kind of know, like, I'm not really the one to be as vocal. Like, I'll be vocal, but I'm not the one to be like, majority vocal but you guys will lead after my actions no matter what and i knew that so it was just like you know if i come back in with this mindset of just focusing on the season nothing nba you guys didn't see me or hear me talk about any nba until literally after the season i didn't even after the season if <laughs> after the season you didn't really talk about it but it's hard to talk about after you win a national championship like yeah. oh, i just stay in college the next three years after that <laughs> <laughs> for real for real it was just like that was the focus the whole focus of that whole entire year was just giving giving my all to Kansas and then letting everything else, you know, uh take care of itself. So speaking of your jump from from college to the NBA, what was your your biggest moment of wow, this is the NBA. This is this is different than college. This is different than anything I've experienced. How uh like, what, what was that moment? 
I mean, I still, I'm still always going to say welcome. My welcome to the NBA moment was when I got traded. I don't even think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think, I don't, I don't think you could be a bucket by Joel Embiid or like getting crossed or getting dunked on. Like, I don't think that's, that's not anything I'm like scared of or like a, a welcome to the NBA moment. Yeah. And it's more the, just the business side now that it's like you're, you're learning, you're learning and it's like understanding what's going on pieces still moving all that stuff and it's just a, like a lot of uncertainty you know as a as an nba player but um that's how it that's how it is that's just how the business of professional sports and like with professional athletes are so it's yeah. like learning that learning the ins and outs of it um making sure you're aware while also just remaining focused on what's what's going on in the season um that's that's kind of a hard task to do but like there's a lot of stuff that you can and can't control in this business, but it's like you just gotta remain focused on the stuff that you can't control. That's that's all you can do, really, as a professional athlete, as a rookie, um, as a any year player. Is just like you focus on what you can control every single day, and everything else. There's stuff that's literally just over your head, beyond that. That's just going on that that you may or may not know about, but that's how it is. That's some. That's the thing that I think a lot of people don't really realize about the NBA. Like it is a business, and you there's so much you don't have control over. Like obviously, like the LeBron James and KDs and stuff, where they can put no trade clauses in their contracts. Yeah, but there's a lot of people in the league that really like if someone just wants to get rid of you. Like yeah, they can. Whew. And it's like do whatever. It's like yeah, there's a there's a lot into it. Uh, there's just a lot that goes into it. Uh, but it's not like it's crazy because it's like there's just basketball like there's basketball you show up and do that every single day like that's our job but then there's literally the business aspect we don't even really get to do much about but it's going on continuous yeah night and day night and day while we're just showing up and doing our jobs playing basketball so it happens whether you like it or not yes exactly at least you got traded for like someone good like it could have been like <laughs> yeah. I, wish I got traded for like a washing machine or something like that would be disrespectful you had traded for Dom yeah. Mitchell and the yeah. man's going yeah. off this year so it's yeah. like yeah at least I have good worth you know yeah no and it's it's kind of it was kind of cool too like I, I couldn't get traded with other guys that were with the Cavs even though I didn't even meet them there was kind of this you know when we came to this team and like there's different pieces and other guys from other teams like we kind of a little bit we we kind of relate in a little way like i relate with colin and and lowry in a little way because like i was in cleveland for a, a while enough to know how it works there a little bit yeah so like i can relate back to them and and their time there they can kind of give me some more information about like how cleveland was for them in their years there so it's been it's been crazy i mean a lot of like you meet a lot of guys all the guys on our team have been traded multiple times so it's like they understand to be traded the first time and then traded again, how that feels. So just talking to them. And that's, that's the cool thing about the NBA is like the, like the guys on my team, um, I'm really fortunate to have like cool guys, like really chill down to earth vets, um, kind of like five or six year guys that, you know, that have been in the league for a while and kind of seen things also been traded like me. So they have a chip on their shoulder in a way. So it's like, all these guys are, they kind of relate to me and I relate to them. So it's, it's, it makes it a lot easier, you know, transitioning into playing or transitioning to not playing all that stuff. Um, there's a lot of resources that I have to talk to. I mean, as of late, you've been playing some of your best basketball. What, what can you attribute that to? And, and how is that, and how has that uh, been able to happen? Yeah. Uh, kind of just, you know, I knew it coming in. They're not really, it's not going to be like, like how Kansas was my senior year, where I'm going to come in, plug and play. They're going to they're going to ruin all the all the plays for me, or they're going to run you know majority of plays, or like I'm, or like I was that guy. But like my role here is the way I'm finding my way on the court is like bringing energy, like defense, energy. Like um, the other night, they just they just have me like guarding Harden, or guarding James oh, Harden. I mean, <laughs> it's just like you really can't like you really can't overthink like. Um, there's obviously scouting reports, tendencies, all that stuff. You can watch film, but like when you're in the game, in the moment, it's, and the coaches even say it too, like it's harder said than done to stay down on DeMar DeRozan's shot fake. So it's like, yeah, they told you a thousand times that he's going to shot fake, stay down. But when I got in the game, I still jumped. Like I still jumped, didn't foul him, but I still jumped. I like, he got, yeah. the other, like, he was making some, t some tough shots, obviously. 
um, me playing over there. But like just bringing, I think just bringing a defensive minded focus um, into the game uh, is what my role is right now. And then just knocking down open shots. Um, some nights I may get shots. Some nights I may not get shots, but that still doesn't change, you know, my energy on defense. Um, so yeah, that's how it is. And kind of just kind of getting comfortable game by game. Um, playing through mistakes is, is something that, you know, I'm really, I'm really fortunate that I get to do as a rookie is come in and, and get these minutes and also play through mistakes, um, play through, play through bad games, play through good games, you know, kind of, it, it's, it's just different. It's just different than my role was last year at Kansas. Um, but also just gaining confidence from that role from my defensive role and also just building confidence. It's, it'll come, but, yeah. uh, it's just it's been nice getting minutes and um just i i appreciate you know playing out there so for sure for sure mm -hmm. i was just say is there any place in the nba that's had like a crazy allen fieldhouse type uh vibe to it or the, the fan support is just that much yeah. much more i would say i would say utah low-key yeah, Z -Bots. yeah, yeah. Utah. it's, it's kind of cool um our games get really really loud it'll be like a tuesday night wednesday night Friday, Monday night, whenever it's sold out probably by the first, by the first time out, it's full, completely full. Fans are loud. Fans are encouraging the whole entire game. No matter what, if we're down, we were down by like 20, um, against Philly in the first half, ended up coming back and lost by like one, but it was like a, still like a fun game. They, the crowd was in it. They're always in it. So it's like, it really is like Allen Fieldhouse. And then you go on the road, um, you go to some, you go to some places and, fans won't even be there or like for the first half or they won't even cheer like even if their team is winning they won't cheer like that like like the lakers games are kind of just weird because it's like a show it's more like a show like people just show yeah. up yeah and then like miami miami heat games are just kind of like a party in a way <laughs> yeah yeah but you, you can see it in different cities like minnesota they have a good crowd they have loyal fans it's kind of like that so it, it's just it's just different crowds in different cities is the, who is has there been one person like sitting courtside where you've like gone into the game and been like, oh shit, there's there's whoever. Like is there one guy you've been starstruck by like, oh, I gotta play, I gotta play extra hard. Nah, uh not really. Not really, because like stars don't really want to show up when the Utah Jazz come in town because it's like Yeah. So it's like but I understand. But um coolest person I saw courtside. Uh, I don't know his, I don't know the actor's name, but he's Shane in in The Walking Dead. Oh, um, what's I've never seen The Walking Dead. What's his name? You've seen it. Oh my gosh, yes. No, I've never seen The Walking it's... Dead. Who? Sweet. Yeah, I can't look it up. Who looking it up, boss? I yeah. There's no way. I he played the Punisher too, right? Yeah. Oh, there. Because that's all I was gonna ask. But I, I was yeah. Want to say that it was gonna be a part. Uh, John Burst Burst and all. This guy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would yeah, that'd be the kid. That'd be someone I never knew his name, but I would be like that guy's famous. Like I know who I, I saw him, and I was like, I saw him. I was just like, I gave him like a thumbs up, like what's up? Because I was like, I did <laughs> like Walking Dead. I was like, that's shame. That's that's kind of tough. Ah, he's hunting zombies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So no, that he, he was probably the coolest person that I've seen so far. But there's more to come. I mean. That's crazy. Like you guys play, like the amount of games you guys do, though. Like that, that blows me away. I feel like after we play and we get through twenty games at KU, and we're like, damn, we're sore. Everybody's in treatment, all that stuff. Yeah, we see yeah. you guys do eighty. It, like, that, yeah, it, that's crazy. It's but it's like it's it's kind of different if you think about it. Just take out school. Like if you take out school from. And it's just straight basketball every day and like training and like you work on your body every day, then you can make it through. Like you can make it through if you're really, really taking care of your body, which you have to do. Mm -hmm. Like there's no other choice but to not like take care of your body. What extra do you do on top of what you did at Kansas at, uh, for the Jazz? Like what? I'm not even, I mean, I'm in the cold tub every night. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah, you weren't touching the cold stuff before. Every every night or like yeah, no, I wasn't touching the cold stuff at all. Like no one's no one's <laughs> like <laughs> now it's like you now now it just like to me it really feels good. So like every night that we don't have a game or something like that, I'll just go back to the the, the facility like with I'll get some shots up or something like that, and then I'll just go get in the cold tub, hot tub, back to the cold tub, like back and forth. 
um i'll do that i'll hit the steam room just to just sweat and just get everything out um normatech boots i love those i usually i stay in those for a while like before practice or stuff um i do a lot of stretching so a lot more stretching than i can't i didn't even stretch at all but like here like I mean, obviously you have no choice but to not stretch or like get some kind of movement in every single day. So it's like, I'll either have some like mobility day or like just lift that day um, type stuff. So, but it's it's just like an everyday thing. So it's like you you get accustomed to a faster. Is there a difference between like college practices uh, at KU and then in the environment? I was about to say, I was about to say, there's no way you can play two games practicing like you did at Kansas. Never a single day. Two and a half hours. Never, you would never, you would be able to play 45 games. Yeah, no, you couldn't. You couldn't. Like, the practices we do, it's like we have pre-practice work. So, like, say we have practice at 11 o'clock. I have to show up at 9.30. Like, my workout's at 9.30 or, like, an hour. What is that? An hour and a half? Before, two hours? 11 o'clock, 9.30. I wasn't doing the math. Hour and a half. <laughs> Yeah, it's an hour and a half. Hour and a half before. I show up, just get my work in for like 30 minutes. Go lift. Eat breakfast after sometimes if I didn't eat it before. Kind of just chill. Like I have so much. There's like downtime before I, before practice, before we all meet together. Because everyone has like their own individual times yeah. before practice. Obviously, vets have times closer to practice. So they don't have to show up until like 30 minutes before, 20 minutes before. But I have to be there like the first one in the gym is yeah I didn't play. you're definitely gonna have a little which is that yeah, that's not that new for you you were doing that like, yeah yeah so it's just like yeah it's just like showing up early getting my work in like my real workout in and then like that's i'd say you, in that workout you do more than you do in practice uh-huh. like you're sweating more and working out harder than you are in practice so once we get to practice first we go in watch film come out uh usually go over like we always have like an offensive segment defensive segment we'll maybe throw something in there whatever some days like practices won't won't be longer than an hour ever like so we can show up get in get our work in practice out of there i mean i think both of you know that kansas whenever we go look at the little slip oh my god 120 (laughs) all of our heads out of our stomachs Oh, uh, I got. I was. I was doing that math so fast because he never would do like an hour and twenty minutes. It'd always be like one twenty. Not like, yeah, one twenty nine, one thirty six. I'd be like, oh god, two hours, two hours, two hours. <laughs> two hours. You saw him. You saw him for that one twenty, and you're like, no, because no. I mean, you always add an extra forty five. Like so, whatever the practice, if it the practice slip said three hundred minutes, it was three hundred forty five minutes. Since how long that practice is actually going to be? It never was anything less. Always 45 more. Yeah. One last thing. One last thing. Oh, one last thing from an hour in till three hours in. That's what you that's, hear. That's what, like, there's some stuff. Like, people ask me, like, what do you what do you miss? What do you not miss? I'm like, I do not miss the practices at all because, like, the practices <laughs> here are just, it's just what They it, have to be, they, like you said, they have to be, they have to be different because there's yeah. no way you guys yeah. could do the two hour day of a game. Remember, First game last year, we had practice at seven o'clock at night the night before, and then practice. Yeah, we went two of the. It would hit. We had two of the on game day, or right? Or, yeah. yeah, and then we came in, and then we had shoot around later. We had a full practice in the morning, came around, shot around later. And that was when I started because Coach got mad at Remy, and that's why we yeah. kept on practicing. And so I, I started. <laughs> It was like, and they're being like, I'm just, just as gassed as these guys are. <laughs> I would know again. Yeah, the other day, but I was. Oh, this is not going to say anything. I was like, shit. I think it went what do you like me? I was like, dude, Chris, you're starting right now. What's that feel like? And you're like, dude, like, I have no idea. I'm chaos. <laughs> well, dude, that was like, and it would be different if I had like a couple of days heads up. But it was really like, what a pregame shoot around to the game, being like, Chris, you're starting. And I was like, oh, I have a three hour heads up. Like, I don't even, I think I called my mom after. Or after <laughs> tell me before. Yeah. She was mad because I don't think they were even going to come to the game. <laughs> so they had to like cancel their plans to go. Like, Mom, I'm starting. Show up. Starting tonight. That's crazy. Yeah. Chris, or Chris, this is a question for you and Coach. What has been your craziest fan experience, whether that be at the game, at the grocery store, at dinner? What, what, what's been something that, that you 
with uh, remember and care to share? I I don't really have anything crazy. If I re- if I'm really thinking about, it, I have nothing crazy. I mean, I have a bunch of little kids still come up to me today, and be like, "I got a mullet because you." Or I think the other week, I had like a group of like five or six kids. When this is when I had my hair long, still came up and asked if they could touch my hair. Like they didn't want me to sign anything. Like they did nothing. They just wanted to touch my mullet. <laughs> It was just like, I didn't know what to do. I wasn't going to like tell them no. So like, just a bunch of little kids. So they're like, what? It's like a petty on Christine. Yeah, I, I felt that. I went home and cut my hair that day. I felt like it. <laughs> Smiling. I love that one. Oh. Um, craziest experience, fan experience for me. Uh, I wouldn't say there was just one. But being in the NBA, it's like, I don't know. I don't know if it's literally just Kansas fans, but like everywhere we go, like well, I'll be at the game tonight. There's gonna be Kansas fans there. Like someone's gonna be so, but it's so crazy. Like someone's gonna be in the stands screaming my name. Like whether whether I'm playing, whether I get in the game or not, like they just have like Kansas fans are there because they know I play for the Utah Jazz and the Utah Jazz is in town. So it's like they're just all there. And um, I'm trying to think. Everywhere we go. Like all my teammates, they're always like, they're always saying something like, oh yeah, like there's the Kansas fans, like there's the Kansas fans here for Dope and Hummuch. Like they're always there, they're always following you guys everywhere. That's awesome. I think, I think it was kind of like for me, like that happened in Germany too. Like we had, there was a little kid with a sign, like holding up a sign for me. Yeah. He's like, Mitch, I'm a big Kansas fan. And I was like, dude, like I am on the other side of the world right now. What are Jayhawk fans doing here? Bro, yeah, it's, they're staying up till two thirty in the morning to watch it too. <laughs> they're really dedicated. Like, no, they're legit true family. They're staying up late to watch the games. Yeah, it, it is. It, it is pretty crazy. I mean, even like that the next step in my my career and coach's mm-hmm. career, like they still follow you, and I'm sure they're still following you, Chris. I mean, I'm sure you get the oh, hi, hey, Christy, and Dia, and Dia, okay. Yeah. But, uh, it is surprised. I, I give it so some less. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. We we do have, I think, the most like I would say the most loyal fans, like legit yeah. die hard. Like it maybe it's just a Midwestern thing. Like you're saying some of the cities that have the great like fans, like the actual die hard fans in the NBA. Maybe it's just a Midwestern thing, but like they come to support everything. Like if I hosted an event and posted it on Twitter, something down, like you would have a good amount of Kansas fans coming. I'm not like a queuing up. They would have like a superstar or something. They just they would just go like they anything Kansas, boom, let's go. We're there. Yeah, yeah, literally. I was thinking like I'm trying to think of like some of the crazy stuff that we experienced together. Like I mean, there is the the plane with the engine exploding. Like that was pretty crazy. We talked oh, about that. I ain't... Um, we I've talked about that on every episode, and every single episode I get a good sound bite out of it because everybody's reaction is just like <laughs> different but hilarious. There was uh, Jay Will about it, and I forgot that him and Dot were literally sitting there, like, texting them. I mean, this is not, like, bad, but, like, he was texting his mom. He loved him and stuff. Like, yelling out of the flight attendant, being like, yo, what's going on? I actually asked him if he opened the door or something. <laughs> Where I was like, Chris, Chris, what's going on? Chris, 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 Chris. And you're like, just slowly shut the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or every... You're like, dude, I have no idea. Am I a flight attendant? No, I'm not. Bro, I don't got... remember that. I just remember from that, like, there was a good, there was a good, like, four or five minutes that everyone was just looking around, and everyone was, like, really confused. Like, everyone was, like, looking around, like, is this it? Like, <laughs> for real. I was, like, so I'm going, I just wanted to die with my thoughts. This was pissing me off. I was talking way too much. I was, like, just let me say a prayer and get forgiveness for all the bad things I've done. I think it, I think it had to be, like, whoever you were sitting by at that time, like you were sitting by, you guys were sitting by each other. Like I was sitting by David and he was just over there, like chilling, like had his headphones in. It was loud. But he was like, yeah, he was like laughing and stuff. He's like, he's like making me kind of calm down in a way too. Like I wasn't really freaking out. He was like, he wasn't freaking out. So I was like, all right, like everything's fine. And then he was like, he told me, he was like, all right, like we will be okay. Like we can fly with, what, what was it like? Yeah. Didn't you, and then, did we technically have no, we had one, one went out or we have like yeah. two engines. You yeah, so two of them, one went out. David was explaining to me something else, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good word. Got a ten engine on this plane. Like when we had, he said, "I don't know if this is true, David. I don't know if this is true. You can, you can <laughs> it. But, it, but he said there was like, I don't know if there was three engines and one went out, and we had like an extra one. There's like an extra one, 
that we could have flown we could have flown back to Lawrence on it. But like I think I think that there's I think there is something. I don't know. This could be complete speculation, but this it just makes sense. I have two engines but they had like not even an engine, but something that would just at least allow you to like slowly glide. So if like two engines went out, you didn't just like just pull off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, after that, I was like, I was chilling. I was just chilling. The plane was kind of buzzing, or whatever. But I think, I think when we landed uh, back in Stanford or whatever, and like got off the plane, we had like our off day there, or travel day, or whatever. I think that was that was a really fun time because like we never really got to do that on the road. Yeah, and we never really yeah. just got. Like chill on an off day in California, which was like we were still traveling, but like it was still an off day. So the vibes were crazy because we were still alive, man. We were coming. Yeah. <laughs> we also like when we fly, we usually have practice before or we fly in and have like something right after. So like a day of just flying. Yeah. Was I mean, yeah, like what you're saying was kinda cool. And we, I think that like obviously the the actual part of it happening when we got trapped in Brooklyn that one time. That whole part was terrible. But as soon as we got back to the hotel and got like our chill time and like to the plan mm-hmm. the next day, like those were like, that was actually pretty fun. Like I we really it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and nothing thinking about, oh, you got it. I, I don't know if this is what you're going to talk about. Uh, when we got starved on Thanksgiving, oh day, oh. <laughs> uh, how, how on Thanksgiving day, the one day you're supposed to eat all the food, you don't eat anything. That was the hungriest I've ever been in my entire life. I, I, like that i don't even remember it like that because i was just so hungry like mad like <laughs> i just remember drinking gatorades i was chugging gatorades to make my stomach hurt so i wouldn't be as hungry i was thinking they'd amazon i just like put it down and then be like we need, we need to we need to, give, we need to give the viewers some context about what we're talking about okay so we were we were in maui and so obviously we beat Maui in the Dayton or we meet beat Dayton in the Maui Invitational and the net they let us stay that night and the next day we flew out. It's like in Hawaii you usually knew the flights like overnight and land and the they uh, land in like Kansas at like five AM. And that whole plane ride, they only I think they only brought like one box lunch for the whole plane ride. And this is like a seven hour ride. Yeah. And going into that one hungry as well. Like we you and like they told us to go eat and you and I like forgot to go eat. It was and like, so, yeah, it was, we left at like, well, nothing, nothing was really open. Three, yeah, no, like, nothing was open because it was Thanksgiving. And yeah, we like, left at, hey, go film for yourself. We left at like three, or it was like some early time, like early afternoon time like that, where it was like, we woke up. I don't even know if we had breakfast provided for us because everyone was packing up to leave. Get on the plane, slot, get on the plane, where we got some chips and snacks. Get to California. There's still no food there, right? We had that. Like, got, yeah, we got off the plane in California. And we were like looking for food, like <laughs> about the Uber usually they to the airport. Well, usually they have the stuff. Like when you get off the plane, like if you have that gas, or, like they have like Jersey Mike's or like Chick Fil A yeah. or something like that. And so, like when you're on when you're flying on those flights, like that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Like before we leave, like having those like when we would leave a uh, Allen Fieldhouse when fly like in the Big Twelve or whatever. And you'd have those buffets before practice. Like you knew there was a couple there that you got excited about. Like with Q thirty nine, with Q thirty nine, Q thirty nine. I don't know why I was such a fan of the high V. I do. It's good. I love the high V. Like when we did the sandwiches from high V. It was probably one of my favorites, just because like those little, those little wings, the boneless wings, wings. crazy boneless buffalo, and they were good. Like they were good popper size. Like you could just get a bag of them and pop them like chips almost. Yeah. I wanted to I wanted to ask you what you thought about this year's team and uh, see if see if you had any insight on them. Duh. It's I mean so for the games like for the games that I can't watch because there's sometimes I literally can't watch a game like I don't get forever. Um, for the games that I've seen, I mean obviously they're they're putting Kansas fans through like what we put through, but like like what we did last year is my heart like, like all those close games and stuff like that. I think that's just building them up more and more for March and more and more for like the bigger moments that are coming in the season. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I think like right now, they're, I don't even know who's, what are they ranked number two? Yeah. For, you saw like, number two. Number one. We're two, yeah. No, we're two. I mean, I think there's a couple. <laughs> are we, did the rankings come out today? I don't know. They've come out. The letter changed. Should we check it? I don't know that, who was number one was Purdue one yeah right and they lost 
I honestly only follow Kansas at this point, to be very honest with you, and some other Big 12 schools. Like, I, li- I really like to see Texas lose, so I follow them a good amount. <laughs> <laughs> and I really like to see Baylor lose. So I watched them. No, no, no. no, but, I mean, still going back to that point, whether they're two, two or one, I, I mean, I think they should be number one in the country by now. I don't know why they aren't. But I think um, that's something I was thinking about the other day. Like, the team that we had last year, was so good because like we just trusted each other and you could see the trust like just obviously we were talking about it. you could see the trust that was built up yeah. time. but this team has that same formula that we did last year and everybody's like you can see everybody's just still like we're not still but like everybody's getting on the same page it's getting on the same page but what you and i were talking about the other day as far as like you know what they're with the position where they're in where they're like you know teams will come back on them and stuff like that and it's kind yeah. of you feel like you feel like kansas should be blowing them out i feel like they still win or obviously they're winning these close games they're learning better lessons i think from these close games that will yeah. tr- carry on throughout the season like later in the big 12 or in the big 12 conference or later in in the big 12 tournament first round second round all that stuff is going to carry through because that's what carried through with us all these stressful games that are probably going to continue because the big 12 is like a bitch, bitch. Yeah. So, oh, we're, we're so it is so good this year like this is yeah. the best we've seen it in so long exactly so it's like on every any single night they can lose and we yeah we were talking about it like it's not like we're losing like we're playing so bad the whole game like mm-hmm. we literally will look like the best team in the country for eight minutes in a row yeah like yeah. we look like by far the best team in the country yeah. and then we'll look we'll just give them like three open threes in a row in a four minute stretch and it brings it back to a five point game. Yeah. And then, like, that's like, it's, I don't know, there's a difference between only scoring like 45 points and like not playing good, turning the ball over, just somehow getting lucky. Like, no, we're playing really good, kind of shooting ourselves in the foot, but then going to battle the last four minutes where it's like, yeah, these guys, when they're in the trenches, it's, yeah. When you don't want when to be there with them. When it means the most, you know that, you know that we'll still be in the fight. So, like, that's, I feel like that, as a Kansas like alumni, like now saying that I'm Kansas alumni, like all the, all that, like playing there, like that's all you can really ask for from the team. Yeah, per I love it. I love it. I love those close games. Like that's where I feel most pride being as that Kansas yeah. alumni is when we go to one of those small, like come back from eight points down with two minutes left. Like yeah, just like get gritty ass wins. Like I love watching that. I feel like that's that's how we win the Big Twelve, and that's how. That's how we win the Big 12, and we've seen them. That's how you lose the Big 12. But it's like, that's where you really that's where you really come closer together as a team. Every I, single uh, game. I saw this stat about Coach Self's record in the field house in games decided by in overtime. It was like 33 and 6 or something, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> 36 or something. Decided by 5 or less points. Insane. Like, Bro, like, I'm like, <laughs> the magician in late game calls and yeah. if you guys know this like every every single play like whenever he calls a timeout with three minutes left we're getting a bucket on the out of timeout mm-hmm. and then it's going to bring the game that much closer and then his pep talk to us about defense is going to make us decide that not even god could score on us the next possession like sure there's so hey, you rich yeah. we're gonna make we're just gonna make these next like two or three possessions just like hell for you and then we're gonna be like there's like there. 30 seconds after he's like, oh, plenty of time. Down by eight, plenty of time. No big deal. We got all the time in the world. That's just like, I love when he does it. He'll rip your ass for 38 minutes. Be like the baddest man of all time. There's 45 seconds left. We're down one. We need a stop. He's in the huddle like, hey, guys. We got to this one. right here. Like laughing. Like, <laughs> he's like, over here smiling in the huddle where everyone's like, this is when everyone's kind of like on edge. He's over here smiling in the middle. Oh, yeah, so. he knows, but, but I love watching this. This is my favorite. It's my favorite right here. Like you do it every time. <laughs> and he knows the perfect, like the perfect thing to say to like we're all like on edge. And he's like, it's okay. We're fine. Got him right where we want him. No big deal. And all of us are like, oh, this is a big deal. Like we are very close to screwing this up. Like yeah, yeah. Alan Felix is like, at one thirty right now. Decibel led the homes play, and he's in the huddle being like. Trying to yell, he's trying to he's trying to yell to us what to do. We're just like it's all loud. The thing that's crazy is like I know you guys know this, but like telling the fans that 
coach self will be yelling in the huddle and in the field house you can't like his mouth is just moving you can't hear a single word he's saying won't be able to like, all right all right unless you're right if this is like right and you're like uh and then he like starts scribbling down on the board and you're like having played for him for four years and, and you understand what he wants from you just by scribbles on the floor I, i'll i'll never forget i'll never forget the national championship game <laughs> Oh, it was like the last moments of him, like obviously last moments of him coaching, like me and that group of guys. He was in the huddle, Mitch. I don't know if you were in the huddle, but it was after DeWan turned it over, where he stepped out of bounds. Uh, it's 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 out of bounds. Step down of bounds at the end, and whatever. Everyone's freaking out. He was like, he was like foaming from the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like he was actually, I tell you, like he was actually foaming from the mouth. I was like, like I stopped for a second. I was like, coach, like. Chill. <laughs> he was like, I'm, I'm after you to do this. I was like, yo, yo, yo. Come We're still with it, dog. We're still with it. Yeah, I'd never seen him like, I'd actually never seen him like that before. But he was like really, really intense. And I was like, like, I was like, take it back. I was like, coach, you need to calm down now. <laughs> and it's not much how, like, we're okay. Like, we got this. We gotten up to this point. I think we're fine. I think it's interesting, coach. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. That was no, like, fun. When that happened, like in the moment, we're like, how in the hell did he step on the line? What are we? I was just trying to, I was just thinking, this clock needs to go down. Like, we, let's just get out of, like, let's just get out of here. Let's just win this. I swear I thought Caleb Love shot at the end. I swear I thought that was, that was good. Oh, oh like, I was like, just our luck. He's going to make this thing just like he did against Duke. Like, I was like, there's no way. I was like, there's no way. No, one's, we're not going to get to this point. Someone's going to beat us on a bus pier. So, like, that's not how. That's no. No. Yeah, no. I honestly, we really got beat by a bu- like whole buzzer beaters our whole time there, and most of the time one we was deserved it. Dayton's, yeah, that one's. We kind of deserved that one though. Yeah, I mean we played we played bad, but they Oh yeah, yeah, we did. What are the other buzzer beaters we've lost to? And our well, we didn't lose one, but Mitch, Grayson Allen, and Duke are oh, my first my year sophomore. On the lead eight, oh, one bounced backwards in out. Backwards again and rolled out. I, and it took five minutes. I was just in the being like, oh, happened, we're not going to make. The fact that that happened before OG even got there. Yeah. Wild. Like, I can't believe it. I was like, dude, there's no way that we don't go to the Final Four because of Grayson Allen. Like, I'm a freshman. Like, I still see these guys as like stars. Like, all I've heard about is Grayson. I've hated Grayson Allen since the second I saw him going to do. I was like, He's getting back at me. He doesn't even know who my like what my name is. He's doing this to personally victimize me. Is but how cool is that though? Like people are like like Grady, like he's got that vibe. Like he's like got the swagger. He's really freaking good. Like oh yeah. Like Kansas has their race in Allen, and personally, I couldn't be more happy for it. Like it's oh so yeah. cool to see Grady go out there and play with this, play his offense. And play with some emotion, which is it's which is important. He played it. Not, he, he plays with confidence and emotion, but it's not like it's not like it's not like CDB. Yeah, I guess we're gonna like Brandon. We'll do like Allen. It's kind of just like a fun spirited like. Yes, but he's a tall white guy that shoots at a high major program. Yeah, and he, <laughs> compared to Leitner or Grayson Allen, and, yes. and everyone's gonna hate him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and everyone hates him unless. Back. Unless you're, you're you play for their team, and we, we're lucky he plays for our team, so I think I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. It's because of both. I mean, we're at the game this weekend, Mitch, but he may be the best pure shooter as a freshman we've ever had come into Kansas. Would I be? I, I would argue to say he might be one so. of the best shooters we've had in Kansas, just because I think so. I think one of the best. I think one of the best shooters at Kansas. Dude, like, he gets it off so fast. He gets it off quick, but it's like, it's like he. The shots that he's the shots that he's getting, and obviously, like it's it hasn't been like obviously he's getting the conference more, and like they're making it tougher on him. But he's still getting like those open looks, like they're still like working the offense through him. Like he's still getting those shots. Obviously, it, what do you have like twenty one? The other guy, other yeah. yeah, yeah. Like he's still getting those shots off, and it's like still really efficient as <laughs> so efficient. <laughs> I don't think I will say I don't think he's missed a like an actual open three. Like there's been somewhere like. He's like come off like if he's standing there and they throw him one and he's open with like no one but no like I don't need to miss one this year. No. It's like lined up. And like that's what that's why I'm just like this team could literally 
I, I feel it, but I'm not trying to like jinx them now. They could honestly like repeat, knock on wood, but like they, they do have the tools and chances with coach and the support staff and the belief and everyone's been, everyone's done it once. So they know what it takes to do. Yeah. And, and the new guys, then the new guys want it so bad too. Like Kevin yeah. came to Kansas to win a national championship. Grady came to Kansas to win a national championship. And you have all these guys who have experienced it and they have gone to the top of the mountain. They have one year. They experienced one year of it, just coming to Kansas and winning a national yeah. Like those guys, all those freshmen that came in, like experienced that. So it's like, now you see like KJ's making a big jump as far as just like his, his yeah. activity, like on the court and all stuff. Like he's seeing that that's what it takes, you know, for him to step up and, and for the team to step up to, to that place. So then once you get a taste of that natty, like how can you get the appetite for anything less? Like nothing. Yeah else is, excites you like winning the big 12 championship which is great so much fun but it's like yeah I, I mean i gotta go i gotta keep on i gotta keep going for real speaking of kj like that like seeing him play as well as he has now is- how many how many like go ahead buckets or like buzzer beaters has he had i feel like at least two or three right like i think of two in the last two weeks yeah you know what the dunk um, against texas tech and then this one against uh I feel like he had a bucket yeah, against Oklahoma, or Oklahoma State or something like that. Was it him or was it Oklahoma State? No, Kevin hit it. Kevin. Kevin hit a hand and one against Oklahoma. I think KJ was against Oklahoma State. Yeah, KJ was like, or he had like a layup or something like that. Like a dunk or like a dunk or like a. This, okay, the dunk at TC or uh, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I would hackle him out of the absolute nuts. But him, the man, like KJ dunked it. The dude jumped into the back of KJ, and the guy bounced off of KJ. Like, <laughs> what's wrong with that man? <laughs> Bro, I don't know. Did you see the like quip, whatever his name is, Poncho, Poncho, like the guy who was running? He was running like, like, the all the five knees, like this. <laughs> he just jumped. He just launched himself at the rim, and then KJ was already on the rim. He just bounced off of him. <laughs> well, dude, they're compl- everyone, all the Texas Tech fans are complaining about. The foul calls down the road be like, oh, we didn't get any foul calls. Like, they should got a technical for hanging on the ramp. I was like, if we're talking about any foul call, the man literally tackled the football. Like, <laughs> nah. That's but well, okay. are, are they like four or five games in the conference? We're five and oh. Five, five. Now. Yeah, because we're the Iowa State and us were the last two ranked or last two undefeated. And we were both four and four and going in this game. And the only two games that like that haven't been closer, like West Virginia and Oklahoma State. No, Oklahoma State we almost lost. West Virginia, Oklahoma State. We yeah, West Virginia. We that was the only game that hasn't been close. Oklahoma State. We almost lost at home. Oklahoma. We should have lost at home. What are you talking about? That was. We were down eight with three minutes left. Teams other than Kansas never or t- down eight with two minutes left. Teams other than Kansas never do that. They don't. We have the Kansas. We have the Kansas exception, so we can win those games. Uh, no other team does that. I was watching this uh, stat. They were talking about the the foul discrepancy or free throw discrepancy from team to team at home. And Kansas has only shot. I think it was like plus two. Yeah, we're plus two than the, than the opponents at home. And for example, Texas Tech at home is plus 134. So I think talking about the foul, everyone was like, oh, Kansas getting a calls at home near Allen Fieldhouse. You get calls. I was like, here's a perfect stat to say uh, no, and other places get it way more than we do. Like, I, I think that's kind of funny. Tech, I forgot about Tech. You guys can agree with me. That is the worst. Like, every time we go to Tech, the ref is yeah. so bad. You were, they appreciate it. We'll have 100 charges. That was, like, that was like, like, don't get me wrong, I took a lot of charges in my day, but, like, I hated it. Playing against them because they took a charge on. They tried to take a charge on everything you did. You can exactly. stand out there and just like fall over. You have to change how you play against. Yeah, the, like there's this team that you have to change how you play. But like Texas Tech, you literally have to play off two feet. You can't like run. Like you can't just run and jump and try to pass. Like they're gonna. I never see. Last year, remember that guy took a charge, coach. You were going like sideways across the lane, and a guy took a charge and going out of sight. It's like. Yeah, I was going sideways and I like was going like this, and he like bumped off of me like that. I'm like, it was the like I was like, there's no way that we have people taking charges when we're not even going to the hoop. Like we're just trying to dribble. 
You would be driving from the baseline, and they'd be playing four out, two guys in the corner, two guys in the wing. And the guy from this wing, you would drive baseline, would come and take a charge on this end. Like, they would do the weirdest stuff. You literally had no idea where it was coming from. It's like, some person broke, someone's running down there. Someone yeah. maybe off the bench is going to come take a charge. On. Come take a charge. Maybe Mark Adams is going to come take a charge. Possibly. <laughs> no idea who, it's a surprise each time. Yeah. I don't miss, I literally take the tech. Take the charges and just the, the way they're they guard and stuff like that. You know, I don't know. I, I would say they're probably the most like if the most unique style of team that we play play against in the Big Twelve in terms of how they guard. Yeah. Um, remember when at your guys' freshman? Or, oh, for sure you're a freshman year, Chris. But oh, maybe yours a little bit when West Virginia used to press like all the time. Like God. when was pressing, like they've gotten a little bit away from that now. But a back little bit away from it, dude. They have a dog. They don't. They don't press anymore. Like they're a whole. I was thinking about it. They're a whole different team. Like, and we're back to the order that can pick up ninety four feet for forty eight minutes a game, and Dexter Miles that can do the same thing while still getting off twenty five shots and having eighteen points. Like, those are two. Those are the most. Those are the most Bob Huggins basketball players you could ever put on a court. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think it's. I just think it's crazy. Like how we like, we did practice for it told me whenever we played West Virginia, we didn't practice. Like, we would do seven on five press. So we don't on an hour. Seven guys pressing against five, and they're double teaming everything. They're double teaming guys without the ball. Like, and then they wouldn't even press us, which is crazy because, like, we're used to press Virginia. And they wouldn't even press us, and the defense wouldn't even be like, like, the defense wouldn't even be like that. Yeah. Oh, it me off because I just played press defense for 40 hours that week. And <laughs> this Chris's new scam that week. Pressing, and I'm yeah, Lily. I know we have West Virginia on the schedule. Like, I circle it. I hope it's on a short week, so I don't have to like really play defense for four days straight. But it's yeah. like we, it's it's always it's always so different because like it's a different. We always do those practices when we go to West Virginia. It's not it's not for when they come to Allen Fieldhouse because they don't do that when they like they don't even press. When they go. I almost just think it's coach being like, all right. Time to toughen up. Like, they, they, they're, they're tough. They're coached by somebody who, who coaches them. We're all tough. It's your turn now. Like, let's get it. Like, so that's, I think it's the tough, like, the toughen up moment. Yeah, the toughen up moment. For sure. I think, they, I think Bob Huggins and, and Bill Self have a little bit of a pissing contest on whose team's tougher. Not as much now because, like, they didn't have the same team. Like, b- right before we got there, Mitch, when they had, I can't remember what that team was. We were going down there and pretty much losing every year. They were the like scariest, most physical team in the I, world. I remember when I first got to Kansas, like we had only won there like, <laughs> once, or, like once, I think. Yeah, we only won in Morgantown like once. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we were so into the uh, DT when DT went off. We were down like sixteen, and Devontae hit like every single clutch shot you could hit. Yeah, Devontae was the with Gerald. They that was that was a crazy game to be a part of. That was uh that was the second time. You guys had one there? Uh, that yeah. may have been, dude, that may have been the first. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I remember a stat being like, that's either the first time you've ever won on the but, road at West Virginia. I think I think the part that's cool is when you've been there, Oach, like we went up there and won pretty- Oh, we dominated. Pretty regularly. Just, just from that one year, yeah, from the first year that we didn't win there. We gave it a slot drive. Year. Yeah. Yeah. Like, gave, gave it a slot drive. <laughs> but then after that, after that, it was just straight like we dominated them every time we went there, like, which is fun. Like, I, I think that's so. Hey, no, 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 no. We lost my junior year. Yeah, I played that game. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dad, Chris checks. I got, I got some stat. I got, I got all the stats. She got two fouls in there and two minutes of play. What was that game? That game was close too. I feel like. I'm trying to think of which game that was. Like what? Like we were only down like eight. With like we were down eight with like two minutes. Uh, it was a team with like Miles McBride. Yeah. Yeah. And uh McNeil. Yeah, 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 yeah. McNeil, they were cooking. For those that don't know and haven't been to a West Virginia game, the worst part about losing at West Virginia is they play Take Me Home or Take Me Home Country Rose after you lose. Or after they win and that, that I just hate listening to that in a locker room. Because like you can well, sit in the away locker room. You can hear that song playing and everyone's singing along as co- as coach is ripping your ass for losing. Like it, it, it's a it's a negative experience. Why? Well, we cheer it regardless though, because even if we win, like that whole plane ride home, the whole that's all we're playing. We're gonna play. Here's on repeat. 
Yeah. But no, nah, winning winning there. Where would you guys say is the best place to win besides Morgantown? Tech. Yeah, Tech. I mean, I would say K State, but K State, like, they just haven't, like, there was no one there the last time we played. Like, dude, you gotta chill on that, Mitch. We play them on Tuesday. Don't jinx us. Dude, I wanna give up. I'm gonna give a hot take. They need to put fans in the stands. Like, let's, 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 uh, let's have a rowdy match. I mean, I was tired of us going there and getting half full. That is true. Like, I think it's almost better. I never, I never really noticed. I never really noticed if it's like, there's one, like, section. There's one section like you know the tunnel we run out of. There's uh-huh. no position yeah. like on that side that's like empty, but then the rest is filled, right? Well, they try not to like. I don't know if they do this on purpose. Like, if they have, if they don't sell it out, like they won't sell like a section of tickets. So it's not like it's just scattered out. So it makes it look like there's more people on like one side of the bowl. I feel like. Yeah, I'm I, probably I, completely wrong on that, but that's what I observed. Only that you guys wouldn't rather play in that place when it's full. Like I'd rather go to an away game and play against a. Packed gym. Oh yeah, I see. I'm just, I think it's full every time. I mean, I they do a good job of tricking you because I think it's. I believe it is full. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, like every game you play. Like, I'd rather go play in the full packed away game than playing in like. My, like you, you've been to Texas before when Texas has been like half full in the. Oh, uh, those no even suck to lose worse. It's like you just like there's no the worse to lose and it's empty in there. Like the inner, like that was the weird part about COVID is like there was like the energy came from us. We had to make our own energy and like even playing against like Kentucky in where were we at and uh in the uh oh, in Indianapolis. Well, there was yeah. no, there was absolutely nobody in there. Like when I tell you, not a soul. There was not a security guard. There was our team, Kentucky's team, and the refs and somebody running the scores table. That I was like, hey, you like go throw your backpack behind the bench, like. <laughs> AU has more people. Your parents get to come. Like that. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody was in the stands. It was and then like crazy you bro. hear every word you say. Like that's uh, what that it, was all time. With the suit all time, of course. Crown moment. Was with it. He dunked on that guy and you know Wait, something I can't like, say. What did he? No, he was. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, yeah. Was on, he was hanging on the rim and swinging away and just like yelled <laughs> at him. They all, like no one's in this. It was like the most audible one of all time. We can hear it on our bench. We're yeah. dying. Wow! It was like whoa! Like whoa! Like, what did you? No, he had yeah, to attack. He went to the cool stands. That's cool. It's just kind of like the, the the cool part about Christian is like he just didn't care. Like he was he was gonna play with that yeah. energy whether you like it or not. And that's when it started. I feel like that's when it started. Not even not not started because like he obviously been doing that, but like that's when it started. Like. Like, like, if he was doing it in an empty gym, he was going to do it with 60. That, and that's when people started to notice it a little bit more, too. Yeah. Like, that was, like, his coming out party where now people were watching it, and then they were like, oh, yeah, he does. Like, oh, it's not so a lot. <laughs> he's not so innocent. Like, this guy's got a little, little he's got a little shit to us. Like, he did go from, like, his freshman year being, like, this, like, he had the long hair, like, little boy. Like, everyone was pretty much being, like, a little kid, like, being, like, oh, he's so innocent. Like, we love CB to quickly being, like, oh, God, this guy's a dick. <laughs> but, like, in a good way, like, you know, like, a competitive, like, yeah, he's just, he's going he gonna to rip your heart out out there. <laughs> well, Oach, I know you got to go, dog. So, appreciate you coming on. It was a great episode. Yeah. Go get a win today. We we'll trick back in with you soon. Uh, big game. We're tuned in and uh, we're rooting for you. Yep. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Oh, wait. Sure. Rock talk, baby. Rock talk. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 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 Stop it. Yeah. No, I, I haven't stopped recording yet. Yep. You haven't stopped it? Before I go, they're talking about welcome to the NBA moment. It's the last game we're playing Philly. Joel and B got me in the post. Obviously, <laughs> just went over me. <laughs> Slapping me on the butt going down. He said, go KU. I said, bro. <laughs> I said, bro. I actually lied. I got a laugh out of that. I thought that was pretty funny. You know the weather too. Well, also, you have a shot of really guarded man. Like, if you get you back to the boss. People don't realize how big he is. No, like, no. First of all, he's dope. Look, like, he's first of all, he's more than coach. He's huge, but like, he, uh, I can get into this more, but like, his game, his game is kind of changed in a way. Like his game's kind of changed, but he's still a really dominant player. Like he's shooting, he's shooting more threes, more like mid-range pull-ups 
than I've seen him shoot, but it's like he's more like he's efficient for me. The fact that good. she does that, he's done. Oh, yeah, he's doing turnaround turnarounds. Has he made him? Like, mm. I'm like, bro, what <laughs> he even did a pickup with us, and oh my god, when I was telling you, like, I've guarded Doke before, yeah. and guarding Joel, like Joel, I feel like he's like three inches taller and probably like 25 pounds heavier. Like, yeah, he was just massive. They could do whatever you wanted to. Like, like he just getting, up, getting to the basket. You up. Like, it was getting to the basket. Yeah, like this. You're like all of my 225 pounds. There was nothing I could do to stop that. Like there's no, nothing I had for it. Were you guys there? Or I know Mitch was there. Oh, were you there when they they came and practiced? The Sunday Sixers came and practiced now. Uh, I mm, I don't think so. I think it was the year before. That was okay. Uh, dude, Joel was disrespecting Jaleel Okafor that whole day. I had never seen anything like it. Was like and a real we were sitting there, it was like Chris, yeah, Mark, and I, and we were like sitting on the side watching, and oh my god, that was, it dude. Was, he was doing some like Michael Jordan type stuff too. Like he was telling him, like, be like, I'm catching it mid post right now. Like I'm catching it mid post. I'm about to hit a pull up, and would like dink dink heavy like turn away and be like, yeah, that's why you sit the bench, dog. Like he was saying that stuff. So it was disrespectful. That's crazy. crazy. Well, hey, again. We got off topic after trying to edit there. Way hey, good to see you boys. Good, uh, rock chalk, baby. Rock chalk. See you guys later. Good luck, guys.